All right, great. So for our first uh, tutorial session for the Q4 Hackathon, I got a couple of great colleagues uh, to talk about GitLab Geo, so Fabian and Ton. Uh, so let me turn things over to you. I'll let you introduce yourself um, and then we can go from there. And then for people who have questions, feel free to either type it on the chat or uh, verbalize it during the session and uh, we'll go. Uh, let's get started. Super, yeah, thanks for the introduction. So I'm Fabian, I'm the product manager for, for Geo, and I'm very excited about the hackathon. We got some really great community contributions during the last hackathon, and already actually merged a community contribution during this hackathon, um, which is amazing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and then give you a high level overview of what Geo actually is, and then also show you Geo in action, what you can what you can do with it. And I'm joined by Ton, uh, who's a backend engineer in, in Geo, um, who is hopefully going to stop me when I say things that are technically not correct. All right, let me quickly share my screen. Da -da -da. All right, um, you should be able to see my screen, is that right? Cool. Okay, so um, Geo is a part of, of GitLab that um, is interesting to GitLab customers who are very distributed um, and who are potentially interested in additional disaster recovery capabilities. So these are two statements and I, I'll run, run through both of the sort of main use cases of what uh, the geo group is concerned with at the moment and um, then explain that to you a little bit more so the first one is geo essentially provides read-only instances of gitlab instances uh, reducing the time to clone and fetch large repositories and speeding up development so you can imagine um, if you have offices in different continents uh, different time zones sometimes having a single gitlab instance uh, let's say, for example, in, in Europe, um, may result in performance issues for developers that are outside Europe in the United States or in Asia in, in India. And so Geo essentially solves that problem uh, by being able to create many different read-only instances very close to where developers actually are. And that's particularly uh, interesting when you have very large repositories um, and large amounts of data that you need to clone um, and fetch uh, because internet um, speed is great in some regions but not in others and you really want to have your, your geo instance close by. So that's sort of the, the first use case for, for geo and that also makes the most sense. Um, you know, it's about geo distribution. Uh, this is why we are, we are named in that way. The, the second one is actually sort of a, almost a natural like follow-on to having a geo distributed system so geo replicates not only uh, git repositories but also the database um, so the postgres database that powers uh, gitlab and a few other assets and what you can do is as, you, as well you can essentially promote a read only instance to a read write instance in a disaster recovery situation and so that is quite useful if you for example run um, a GitLab instance that contains um, more yeah, sensitive data as probably most instances do. Um, this can reduce the time it actually takes you to recover um, from, from a disaster. So let's say a power failure in a single data center, uh, you can then promote another uh, read-only like instance. One important side note, this is not um, a replacement for backups, right? This is uh, to reduce recovery time. Uh, so uh, you should still back up your data, uh, but this is sort of the second, the second use case. Um, yeah. If you then look at this at a high at a high level, the way um, this works is essentially like this: you have a primary, and I'm going to use this uh, sort of uh, term quite a lot. A primary instance. Uh, the primary instance is read and writable. And then you have a secondary instance in a different region or a different data center uh, that is read only. Um, and we mirror most of the data between those two instances. 
Um, and then for Git traffic specifically, we are actually able to proxy the requests over from the, from the secondary. And what this means is you, um, you essentially have now a system, it's almost like a star topology type network. We have a read write primary in the center and then you have one or many secondaries surrounding uh, your primary. And quite a few of our customers have, let's say, uh, one, uh, one secondary, but some others have many different offices, and so they have sometimes five or, or more secondaries. Um, this, is, uh, this is the whole thing on a, on a high level. But because this is a hackathon, and um, the high level may not be sufficient, um, this is the geo architecture diagram. And now you can see this is a little bit more involved if you, if you dive into the, the details of what replicating things between A to B actually means. And I think one thing to highlight here is sort of from the, uh, from the GEO team that GEO is, is built to be relatively resilient um, when you transfer information over the internet. Um, so there's a lot of like internal, like, logic to retry and to make sure that data actually gets, um, gets covered. And so if I start here from the top, again, we have sort of a, a primary node and a secondary node. Um, and the first thing to know here, and this is actually quite interesting for many of our engineers, is sort of this, um, this database aspect, right? So GitLab uses internally um, a Postgres uh, database. Uh, this is at the moment the only supported database technology. Um, and we essentially stream um, all of the changes in the database to the secondary um, node, right? So this here is uh, via Postgres streaming replications, um, which is relatively fast. And so every time there's a change on the primary uh, that essentially is written to the database, let's say you create a new issue, that gets replicated like, very quickly uh, to the, the secondary. But we also have a tracking database here, which is the only writable part actually on the, on the secondary, which keeps track of all the events and what changes were actually made. Um, and then like, we, we sync up the, the primary and the secondary node. Um, there's also other things like, for example, authentication. Um, the secondary node authenticates against the primary. And there's a bunch of additional um, bits and pieces here that are, are being replicated. And so we have, for example, attachments. So if you upload something on your, um, on your secondary or CI artifacts, LFS objects, they get also um, pushed to, uh, to the secondary and are available there. That's quite helpful um, as well because um, you, know, you don't need to manually rsync these things over, right? They, they are just supported out of the box by, by Geo, uh, which is, is quite neat. And um, one of the main challenges in the team is actually adding new, um, new data sources here. So let's say currently we're working on design repositories. And then lastly here, um, we deal with Gitly, which is the RPC layer uh, that we use to access Git. And this is actually very neat, and I'll show that to you um, live a little bit. So from a developer perspective, um, using Geo is almost fully transparent. Um, that means uh, if you actually clone um, or pull changes from a secondary node, um, you can also push changes to the secondary, and this gets proxied transparently to the primary, so it essentially behaves as if it was writable, but it's not. And that's quite nice uh, because uh, you don't need to configure Git in such a way that you, know, you, you pull things always from the secondary and then you push things over uh, to a different uh, server. Uh, you can do the same thing on the secondary. And actually, by now, we also support uh, using a geo-aware load balancer uh, for this, uh, specifically for Git traffic. So you can have, let's say, five, five secondaries and one primary. And um, they all share the same, uh, the same name, essentially. And then there is a, you know, let's say, root 53 or other implementations. Uh, depending on where you're located, uh, we determine sort of automatically what the closest secondary is and then you, uh, or the closest node is, and then you are automatically redirected to that. So that's Geo, um, essentially in a, in a nutshell. Um, 
And from an engineering perspective, it is, it is quite interesting actually, because uh, a lot of the changes that are happening happen you know, in different parts of GitLab as a whole. So you can sort of joke that if you, um, if you want to work on Geo, you sometimes need a good overview of what uh, GitLab actually does as a whole. So for us, it's sometimes quite interesting because we interact with a lot of different teams and need to understand you know, how new features are being added. And that's uh, actually quite exciting. Okay, um, I also have a list of issues here prepared that we can, uh, I'll send to Ray and then we can go through that in a little while. But I wanted to take the opportunity here to actually make it a little bit more concrete and show you how this actually looks like on a, uh, on a live sort of demo instance of, of GitLab. Um, so let me drop out of my wonderful presentation here. Um, and I don't think there are any questions in the chat yet, so I'm just going to continue. Okay, so what I have here um, is a pretty empty um, GitLab instance. So I'll just reload it. And you can see here, uh, I've designated this as a, as a primary. And it behaves exactly as any other GitLab instance would. Um, so for example, let's say I make, um, I go to my projects here, um, I create a new project, I call it Hackathon. Um, and I just create it. And I initialize the, the project. Um, just on it, um, it, there's no difference that, that you need to be aware of. But if we actually now go and we look at the administrator area, um, this is actually the latest installation of GitLab, so 12.4.2. You can see here on the left, um, we have the geo area. And you can see that this is actually one of two nodes. Um, we have the primary here, uh, which is where we are, and it's healthy. Um, and then we have a secondary configured here as well. And you can, they're essentially linked. And so if you look at verification information and that other information, um, you can essentially see um, we have three checksum repositories and three uh, wikis that always get generated with it um, and some other more technical information. Um, and then we have a secondary here that is set up to replicate all of the changes that happen on the primary. And so if we look at the sync information um, in here, um, you can see that currently the last event that we processed was 46 minutes ago. Um, so this is going to update relatively quickly because we just actually created a new, um, a new repository. And if we now like follow this open projects link here, um, and I opened this actually, um, we are now on the, on the secondary. So this is this node over here. Um, and you can see the first thing um, is actually that the interface here currently, the web UI interface is in read only mode. And this is, uh, if you recall, I said that um, this is a read-only node. So in the web UI, you can look at things, but you can't necessarily change anything because that would actually cause changes in the Postgres database. And uh, we have currently not enabled sort of proxying of changes to the, to the primary. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll reload that. And um, luckily enough, you can already see um, that the hackathon project I actually created is already synced over here. Um, so I can look at it um, and you can see this is the, the thing I actually created, but I won't be allowed to actually um, perform any changes. So let's say I try, I try to add a change log, um, test, oops, I committed it will fail because I cannot perform write operations on the read-only instance. Um, so this is, this is a limitation because you are on this sort of read-only uh, read instance. If we go to the admin area again, I'll just leave this side, and we go to Geo, um, you actually get a little bit more information. Here's the sync information again, um, and you see the last event actually from the primary was two minutes ago, which is exactly me generating a, uh, a new repository. Um, you can see here, this is currently unverified. So we verify some of our data, uh, data types. So this will be scheduled in the background um, and then be verified. And you can also look at um, some more detailed information here. Um, 
where I created some, some test projects and I can uh, t take some corrective action, for example, to re-verify and resync. Um, the same for, for uploads. Uh, so for example, I uploaded a, a screenshot a little while ago, um, and this is also currently um, yeah, in sync. So that's that. Uh, one of the challenges we are actually going to address um, relatively soon, and that may be, may be something where community contributions are also really uh, welcome, is redesigning parts of the UI. Um, so that's, that's one of the things I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward, for, uh, forward to, like understanding how to surface the information that is relevant to systems administrators. Um, but one thing that I also wanted to show you is how you interact with Geo when you actually um, you know, you use Git, which many of you will be quite familiar with. So for example, if we go to my projects and I go to the hackathon project here and I clone. Um, so for example, here you can clone with SSH. I'm just going to like open my, my terminal. Um, so let's say git clone this one, hackathon primary. Oops. So I'm cloning um, the project now from the primary and I'm just going to go into the hackathon primary project. Um, you can see here's my readme. I'm just going to quickly edit it, um, fix some spelling. Uh, I'm going to leave a message from the, from the primary. Um, now I'm just going to uh, commit with a very informative uh, message. Um, and now I'm pushing. And this is interesting because here, this is on the primary. So this should just work, right? Because this is the read-write instance. I can, I can make changes to this directly. Um, and if we go back um, and look at the uh, repository here, you can see this already synced. Um, that's not particularly surprising. So what happens if you actually um, go and you clone this from the secondary? So if I go onto my secondary node here, um, and I go to the hackathon, hackathon project, you can also see this was already proxied over, right? Which is exactly what Geo does, right? I pushed it to the primary, and now I've already copied over my changes to the secondary. But if I clone here now, uh, so I'm actually not going to clone from the, second, uh, from the primary, um, I'm going to do this on the secondary. As, oops, let's abort this um, hackathon minus secondary. So here I have the same thing again, and I've cloned it from the secondary itself. And this is already like one of the main, inst like the main benefits. You can't really see this. Um, obviously, this has only a small readme file at the moment. But um, in, let's say, some instances, um, one thing comes to mind is, for example, a very asset-heavy industry is um, in the gaming sector, um, where some of the repositories will, will be very large. Uh, they will contain many LFS objects. So for example, for, let's say, the primary here is in, uh, is in the US, and you download and clone your, um, your repository, it may take, let's say, five minutes. Uh, but you have an, um, another office in Europe and they try to clone this from, from the US, it takes 20 minutes. Um, developer satisfaction you know, goes down a lot because nobody likes to wait. But if you then actually clone this from the secondary that is also in Europe, it may be five minutes again. So that's the, um, the main benefit here. So I said the secondary is read only um, and we've cloned here from the secondary. Um, but one of the cool things that um, Geo actually does is uh, we are able to now here uh, also um, type in. I'm just going to do this. Um, and I'll commit. This is not surprising. I made some changes. Um, but now I'm going to push again. And one of the cool things that actually is enabled via Geo is that if you do it, 
um, you get transparently proxied over to the primary. And you can see this message here um, that we helpfully left for you. It said like, hey, you're pushing to a geosecondary. Um, we'll help you by proxying this request to the primary. And this is exactly um, what we are looking for, right? We are able to essentially uh, use a, a local read-only mirror, and we are able to more or less transparently proxy all of our requests over to the primary. And if you would add a geo-aware load balancer into the mix, uh, this would actually be not, you know, my demo secondary um, geo yada yada. This would just be, let's say, GitLab um, or Git dot company um, dot com, um, and it would automatically determine what the right node is. And so, if we if we go back to the to the web interface here, um, you can actually see the other message appears. And so, that's essentially the functionality that G offers. And um, one thing I would like to highlight is that this is actually from like from an engineering perspective this is really like quite interesting you know all of the logic you know that we that we need to have you know all the functionality that enables something like this um, is quite exciting but ultimately geo is also sort of from a product perspective a part of gitlab where for many of our users we are interested in making the user experience very transparent right I'm explaining all of those things to you here because it is interesting. But if you think about an, a developer who is interested in using Geo and interested in um, getting the best user experience possible, independent of their location, fewer configuration steps and you know fewer extra things that you need to uh, need to add are quite important. And so, you know, like all of this um, internal um, logic here is something that. Um, to a certain extent, we are trying to abstract away uh, for, for our users. Yeah. Um, if you want to little, learn a little bit more about, uh, about Geo and um, how it works, uh, I recommend you take a look at the, um, at the documentation. There's a, a lot of interesting um, information. You can see Geo is something um, that is like very actively developed. Uh, there are some current limitations uh, that I would like to highlight. So, we replicate uh, quite a few data types already, uh, but there are some things that we are currently not supporting. Um, and so we are thinking about the next steps of, for example, supporting GitLab pages or uh, supporting Maven repositories. Uh, all of these are things that we are, uh, we are looking into. Um, and we have some interesting things on the, on the roadmap to um, allow others to actually contribute a little bit more, more actively inside GitLab, but also in the wider community. Because at the moment, um, sometimes adding new things is relatively challenging. Um, and we have a proposal at the moment to move, for example, or to try out to move to a more self-service framework where it becomes easier for everyone to contribute new data types that are geo-supported. Um, that's that. I, um, if we go to issues in general, so, um, GitLab issues. Uh, so this is the self-service framework I was talking about. Um, but we have some issues that are um, tagged accepting merge requests. And so um, the group that you're searching for is um, essentially group geo. And um, then accepting match requests. That's quite broad. There's, there is loads here. Uh, we have a, a short list. Um, but any contributions are welcome. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, some, of, um, some of the work that you're doing. Um, you know, we have, we have a few things that are like improvements to the front end. Um, some are um, contributions that um, are more backend heavy, so it depends a little bit on you know, what, you, what you want to do. And we certainly also, uh, if you're really keen, have some more advanced uh, feature requests that you can dig into. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it. 
I'd say. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Fabian. I mean, just uh, uh, one quick question I have. I mean, for some of these issues, uh, are there cases where you would you may need like enterprise license of GitLab to to work on an MR or? Um, so I think that may be the case, especially okay. um, the last one here, the advanced one. If you mm -hmm. are interested in that, um, that is something that may be required. So uh, Geo is a premium feature, um, right. but um, yeah, I, I must admit, I'm not quite sure how the process is in that regard, um, but I'm sure we can figure something out. Yeah, I mean, so basically, I mean, what I recommend people to do if you need an enterprise license, I mean, go ahead and get a 30 day trial. And if you need uh, more time beyond the 30 days, or especially for complicated ones, uh, just ping me, our PAKE, and then I'll be happy to get you extend that license for you uh, yeah. so you can continue your contribution. But yeah, I just wanted to double check. So thanks for confirming yeah. that. So. Yeah. Any any other questions? Um, uh, let me make sure there are nothing. I don't believe there's anything else on chat. Like uh, Ton, I don't know if you have any uh, uh, like recommendation or suggestions for contributors in general as as they get started. Um, but obviously, they can they can ping you on issues and merge requests if they have questions. But Yeah, please do let, just browse through the issues, look up something that might interest you. We might discuss how we can maybe break it down in small issues or, st or stuff like that. But yeah. Just being me or, or Fabian will help you along. No. Hey. I think cool. I think that's an, that's true. Like if you if you are thinking about contributing and you have a question or you need clarification or you would like somebody to review review an MR already, um, just ping me. Um, I'm usually pretty good about um, responding to those, um, yeah. you know, so um, don't, don't be shy in that regard. Uh, these mm -hmm. things are really appreciated. Um, this, is, this is not bothering us at all, right? It's exactly what we would like to see. Yeah, as, as Fabian, you noted, I think there was an MR that came in for Hackathon and I think within a few hours, uh, you were able to merge it. It was a I mean, good documentation fix that somebody, uh, somebody pointed out. So that's, everything's welcome. Yes. All right. Uh, I guess uh, I guess there are no other questions. We can just wrap things up. I'll post this uh, video on on the playlist channel, and then yeah, Fabian, if you can send me the the links to your slide, I'll post it on the Hackathon page as well with the issues. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Everyone. Thanks for Have organizing good. it, and thanks right, everyone sure. for contributing. All right. Have a good evening in Europe. Thank Bye. you. Bye.